America is waking up. The bad news is Washington is still sound asleep. <laughs> the truth is, is gold is money. I was willing to give Obama the benefit of the doubt. I thought it was premature to write this guy off. But now that he's been in office for a while, it's obvious that he is very tight with the Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgans on Wall Street, and he is extremely compliant and pliant to the wishes of the large banks, going back to the, what we saw with Robert Rubin under the Clinton administration, uh, changing laws in favor of the banks. And he's not doing anything to stop the banks. He's helping the banks continue to do what they were doing under Bush. So, in fact, he's just a continuation of Bush on the subject of markets and finance, which is the most important part of his policy right now. Now, I've been asked to speak on the theme <clears throat> of Roman history, uh, particularly the problem of inflation and its impact. His sense of entitlement is similar to the worst of Wall Street excesses. While half the city starves, Nero builds a palace, but hits a roadblock. He's running out of money. Nero won't let that stop him. He has a plan. The workhorse of the Roman economy is the denarius. Rock solid because it's 100% silver. Historians say Nero figures out a way to stretch the denarius. He intimidates coin makers at the mint into watering down the silver content. Nero goes to great lengths to hide his tracks, diluting the precious metal content inside the coins, but leaving the surface pure silver. Nero's audacious gamble with the Roman currency was without precedent. For the first time, we see a systematic and quite serious debasement of the silver content of the major silver unit of the Roman Empire, the silver denarius. Supposed recession, which really is beginning to look more and more like a depression, we seem to be following here the same script that Franklin Delano Roosevelt used in 1933 when he came into office. His first day in business, he declared a bank holiday and then came back with the FDIC in order to stop the bank runs. All right. Number two. So once the dollar gold link was broken, meaning the, the dollar was not anchored to anything that it had to observe as a standard, then that what followed was a massive money and printing operation and fiscal spending to try to get the economy going again. And the third thing he did is to devaluate the dollar by 70%. Let's look at President Obama today. Point number one, the FDIC, remember it was created during Roosevelt, but, but under Bush's tenure, this was originally where we were at when this whole thing broke loose, the FDIC upped its coverage from 100000 to 250000 That was to give people the impression of security and to avoid bank runs. Then there has been, before we severed the gold link from the dollar, here we've seen gold suppression. I'm sure you remember a couple of years ago the, the differences between the paper gold and the real gold, and everybody's going, what's going on here? And it was the paper gold that seemed to drive everything, kept hammering it down. Then we got into massive monetary and fiscal stimulus by the very same mechanism that FDR did, and that was printing all of the money that they needed to do. And now it really has the look that we're trying to slowly, without anybody noticing, devalue the dollar. At least that's a big event. What took place today, and this is from uh, Market Watch News, and the headline reads, Hong Kong recalls gold reserves, touts high security vault. Don't tell me I have all this gold in London. Show me, and oh, by the way, send it we'll back. We'll continue this topic, actually, looking at the coming dollar devaluation. The it's very clear to me in hindsight. It wasn't so clear to me at the right. time, but it's very clear to me in hindsight that the auto bailout was one of the best things that have happened to this Hi, economy. Welcome back to the Kaiser Report. Time now to go to Washington, D.C., and speak with Bill Still, the former newspaper editor and publisher, best-selling author, award-winning documentary, writer, director. His feature-length documentary, The Money Masters, is the 15th most viewed film on the Internet in history. He also wrote and directed The Secret of Oz. 
to look at this within the context of the bull market euphoria that the eurozone was born from to begin with. As Soros notes in that speech, in the boom phase, the EU was what the psychoanalyst David Tuckett calls a fantastic object, unreal but immensely attractive. You know, one of my favorite quotes from Margaret Thatcher is, is she said the problem with socialism is that you eventually run out of other people's money. <laughs> and that's exactly what we're seeing now. Like Robert Fisk talking about how Russia and China are going to start trading their oil in something other than dollars. So this is tremendously uh, negative for the dollar, dollar world reserve currency. And as the dollar gets weaker, of course, that's another huge boost to gold prices because gold prices are priced in dollars. So as the dollar weakens, it takes more dollars to buy the same ounce of gold. So you'll see that huge move in gold on top of the hoarding that'll happen. So as the price of gold goes higher, it's going to draw in more buyers. Paradoxical as that sounds, but that's the way markets work. So the question is, okay, with gold at 1150, let's say, or I mean, say 1050, at what price is it going to trigger panic buying by the masses? So you'll see that jump. Remember in 1996, the NASDAQ was at, uh, I think it was in maybe 35, 3600. And Greenspan said, hey, these prices are irrational. And that brought in mm -hmm. an irrational p buying panic that drove, that drove the NASDAQ from 3600 to 5000 in, a, in, a, in maybe a year or a year and change. It was a <laughs> selling, it was a buying stampede. Yeah, that was the crazy thing about it is like Alan Greenspan, the head of the Federal Reserve at the time, said before Congress, who said, to, well, said to the population, you would be crazy to buy at these prices. <laughs> well, the, what drives markets is not the people's greed you know interestingly enough it's not greed that drives markets it's envy mm -hmm. you know people buy stocks or they they get involved in these manias because they feel they're they're they fear that their neighbor hmm. is getting rich and that they are missing out yeah well because of course those articles that said you know the headline would be greenspan says it's irrational exuberance then the media articles and the and the broadcast media would high, you know, would focus on and profile on somebody who, here's Joe Bag of Donuts. He invested a thousand dollars in this internet company, and now it's worth a hundred thousand. So they profile at those moments. Right, and this makes people, the neighbor of this person, feel like he has missed out, yeah. and that it's he's quote unquote entitled to these riches. So you have this huge buying stampede, which results into a buying climax, which usually marks the end of that of a bull phase. So here we have the situation with gold bullion. It's under-owned, certainly in America, probably less than 1% of the American population has any exposure to gold whatsoever. It's, it's, a, it's a market that up until 2000 had been in a 15 or 14 year bear market, prices going down. And uh, we see all the major central banks and oligarchs now buying aggressively into this market. Hedge funds are buying into this market. The smart money is buying into this market. So they are anticipating a retail buying stampede. But we need a trigger price to, to trigger the, the psychoanalytical envy factor that will drive every freaking Tom, Dick, and Harry and Joe Bag of Donuts down to his local coin dealer or to various websites to pile into gold bullion just wanted to share some things uh, and encourage people who may be discouraged about the crash JP Morgan uh, campaign and how that may not be going as well as they thought um, I want to jump to a Wikipedia article here and this is the American Eagle um, as you can see down at the bottom gives the mintage we had uh, start off with about six million and twelve million the second year pretty steady for about ten years fifteen years then about two thousand and two it had a little spike and then it leveled off and then two thousand and six we got twelve million then ten million then twenty one million and thirty million and this year we've already done thirty two million and we still have December to come, so it could be around 36, it could be even more. So, 
A lot of silver eagles are being minted and bought. Um, again, this is just a tiny fraction. That number, 32 million, that's one silver eagle. Uh, if every, if one in every 10 persons in the United States bought one silver eagle in a year, that's that number. So it's still a tiny number. I want to remind you that uh, historically, 20% of Americans have owned some type of precious metals. Today, that figure is 0.2%. It's one one hundredth. So anybody that tells you that we have a uh, bubble in the precious metals is uh, absolutely nuts. We haven't even started this bull market yet. Um, so don't get discouraged. Uh, we are increasing. And just tell everybody you know to buy silver. Buy a silver eagle for a kid for Christmas. It's a really good idea. Um, one of the suggestions I had is... Uh, Give a kid a silver eagle for Christmas and tell him, now, I don't want you to sell this until you can get a bike for it. What that's going to do is it's going to make him think about what it's worth. And it's going to make him follow the price of silver. So, something like that. Um, just get people interested. Now, I want to jump over to uh, Jason Hommel. He jumped on the crash JP Morgan uh, buy silver bandwagon. And I uh, just wanted to read something to you that he wrote here, just to get you encouraged. As silver returns to use as money, producers will keep what they earn. Most government parasites and all their associates will either starve or learn to become producers themselves. Bankers maintain control through illusion and deception. They lose all their power to manipulate society and lose the capacity to steal the productive wealth of the world's producers if only people refuse to be deceived by paper money and promises to deliver more money and instead take delivery of real silver. Why it can work. There is very little silver in the real world because it has been consumed since the world began using electric things since the end of World War II. Silver is the Achilles heel, the weakest link of the financial world. Silver is the most manipulated market in history. Bankers manipulate it through selling excessive futures contracts and manipulating media, schools, and textbooks because they have to. Now, I wanted to talk about uh, Bix Weir and his vision. Uh, this is what Bix thinks is going to happen. We've arrived at a point in our nation's history that will define how our future will unfold. There are only two roads left to take. The first road continues our relentless pursuit of power, control, and manipulation that can only spell the destruction, spell destruction in our future. Destruction of our liberties, destruction of our prosperity, destruction of our moral compass. For too long, our controllers have lied, cheated, and stolen their way to the top, only to discover that we the people have been left behind. The second road completely destroys the global fiat monetary system, erasing all forms of false wealth, false power, and false governance. It is truly a creative destruction event that has never been witnessed in the history of mankind. All paper and electronic forms of wealth will evaporate in the blink of an eye, completely leveling the playing field in order to rebuild our monetary structures from the ground up. It is a lesson to be learned the hard way, but is a necessary lesson in order to create a new future for our country. A future built on hard work, complete honesty, and goodwill towards others. Down this road, our Founding Fathers' ideals patiently await our return. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Our country is standing at the crossroads. The only question left is which road we'll choose. And I thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. This hearing is adjourned.